broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, and thank you guys for joining our Ribbon webinar. We have Brian Gregory and Greg Zweig here with us from the Ribbon team, um, who is going to go through this presentation with us. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items. This webinar is going to be recorded, and it'll be uploaded onto the 888 VoIP website following the webinar on the events page. And um, if you guys have any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to type them into the questions uh, tab on your GoToWebinar toolbar on the right-hand side, and we will go through those um, at the end of the webinar. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand this off to Brian and Greg and take it away. Thanks, Cal. Appreciate it. Uh, um, so thanks, everyone, today for joining us. As Scout said, I'm Greg Zweig, and I'm joined here in, uh, by my peer, Brian Gregory, and uh, both of us uh, support our whole uh, EDGE portfolio and unified communications portfolio. And so uh, we we are very familiar with everything we're going to talk about today. So if you, as Scout said, if you have questions as we go along, just uh, drop them in the question box, and we'll be happy to address those uh, as we go. Um, so uh, just a little background for those of you who might not know uh, Ribbon. Uh, there's a chance you might not know the name very clearly, but there's a, a better chance that you know uh, pieces or parts of our product portfolio. Uh, Ribbon is really, uh, you know, represents the heritage of a number of different companies. Uh, we go all the way back to the Nortel carrier business, uh, Genban, Sonos Networks, Edgewater Networks, and, and very recently we merged with ECI Telecom based in Israel, who, who uh, provides us now with a whole portfolio of packet and optical network solutions. The company, the combined company today, uh, does business in, as you can see, in over 140 locations. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting closer and closer to a billion dollars in revenue, uh, a, uh, you know, 300,000 employees across the globe. And uh, one, one of our big areas of focus is the session border control space and the whole voice securities. And one thing that sometimes uh, folks don't necessarily recognize is, if I, if I can get there it goes, a long heritage working with Microsoft. Uh, so as we talk about this whole migration to cloud communications, you're going to hear us talk an awful lot about Microsoft Teams and Zoom. And, you know, Zoom is a relatively new player to this market. Uh, but Microsoft has been uh, working in the voice communication space for, for closing in on 15 years. And we as a company have been involved with them every step of the way. And as we talk through some of the newest offerings we have today, things like our new app as a service offer and some of the other things we're doing, like we have a, uh, we just announced yesterday a new survivable branch appliance for Microsoft. Really what you're seeing here is a representation of more than a decade of experience in the space. And, Obviously, given the craziness of 2020, um, you know, it's really been a, um, uh, an unusual year. And, um, and we've seen a big growth in Teams and Zoom. I'm going to pass it over to Brian to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, Greg. So, I mean, you know, if, as we look at the market and you know what has transpired over the past, am I there? You got me? Seems like we have a few uh, little uh, technical difficulties. Yep. Yep. So, hopefully, you can hear me. Greg, if you can't hear me, just uh, okay, good. So, uh, yeah, obviously, over the past uh, nine to 12 months, there has been uh, a major uh, change in how work gets done with with the COVID pandemic, and and the two companies that have been the biggest beneficiary of that have certainly been Microsoft and Zoom. Microsoft, with a very uh, savvy strategy about bundling Teams into their Office suite. So uh, as you buy Office, so your Excel, your Word, PowerPoint uh, uh, platform, you get Teams along for the ride. So they've created a tremendous user base that is, uh, you know, using the product ostensibly for free that comes along with, with the package. And then as you want to expand into other components of that, um, it's really an easy step to make that happen. Zoom has, uh, from another angle, sort of capitalized 
more on the video conferencing and collaboration space, uh, has a very open platform and has um, shown that they are uh, now the, I guess they are the verb for uh, doing a video conference at this point. So it's pretty impressive what they've been able to do. Um, the little chart on the right is actually uh, some uh, a, com a combination of, of some analyst thoughts on where, where work is going to transpire, you know, where it's standing pre-COVID and where, where we expect uh, as we exit COVID and, and things kind of get back to normal. And, you know, not surprisingly, uh, if you look at the top chart, most work was getting done in an office, people going in, you know, commuting into an office uh, with some amount of work from home uh, employee base. That's going to change. I mean, there's no doubt that that's going to change uh, post pandemic that we're going to have a much more even view of where work gets done, where employees are based. So, you know, you as a partner, as a, sir, as a provider of services, you need to really think through that in your portfolio and have the right products in place to make sure that you can make that transition as well. Uh, another data point there at the bottom is we expect uh, Microsoft to have a 30% share of UCAS, which is an astronomical number from where they're starting at, which is a you know, fairly small base. Um, their strategy is very sound, and they, we expect, and most analysts believe, that they're going to take a large chunk of the market. So Greg, why don't we advance to the next slide, and we can talk a little bit about just sort of some terms and, and terminology around Teams and Zoom. Uh, obviously, the starting point is uh, might used to be called Office 365, now Microsoft 365. Uh, their their cloud-based phone system is just called Microsoft Phone System. That's the first thing that you would add in order to make the transition away from the customer's PBX into a Microsoft-based phone system. Um, those are licensed individually. And then from there, you have some choices around uh, voice services to add to your phone system. Uh, the most predominant path is what's called direct routing. In essence, it's SIP trunking that can be provided by any SIP trunking provider that's done uh, the requisite work to make sure that they interoperate with Microsoft and they're using a certified source such as border controller and all those kind of things. Uh, Zoom is, uh, their, their product name is called Zoom Phone, so they're kind of selling that as an add-on to, um, to their uh, video services. And they're bringing their own carrier is in essence a SIP trunking offer as well. So that's kind of, how the two products break down and, and their respective terminology. Uh, next, so what do you, you know, again, as we think about connecting Teams or Zoom to, to your Azure phone system, so this is, in many cases, you're replacing the phone system with one of these two products. It, it, you know, in, in, that, in that realm, we're really talking about a SIP trunking uh, offer that would, be, that would be married with what Microsoft has or Zoom has from their UCAS platform. So uh, <clears throat> Zoom or Microsoft would provide sort of the PBX functionality. You as a provider would provide the PSTN connectivity, the SIP trunks. From there, it's sort of a configuration and then ongoing providing monitoring, analytics, uh, adding on services like business continuity, if you will, to, uh, to, to you know, kind of improve the overall solution uh, for, uh, you know, certainly for that, mid-market to enterprise customer that is, you know, expects those kind of redundancies and, and reporting and KPIs and things like that as part of their, their product set. So that's, uh, that's pretty much how uh, you get into this market, right? It's, um, you know, moving, it, it's really at its core a SIP trunking offer with a few more, uh, a few more little things that you may need to worry about. So Greg, let me hand it back to you and uh, you can talk a little bit about uh, Teams deployments. You bet. Hey, and Brian, let me just ask you why you're still, your mic's still open. Is my sound quality okay? Uh, it, it was a little choppy earlier, but right now it seems fine. Okay. Well, just let me know if it happens. Maybe I'll turn off my video camera. Uh, okay. So, so anyhow, uh, as Brian mentioned, uh, you know, the SPC is a, a critical part of this whole SIP trunking environment. But one thing that does come up and we hear from time to time from partners is, hey, you know, both uh, Microsoft and Zoom, they have their own PSTN options. And there's no doubt about it, particularly Zoom, uh, uh, Zoom really pushes their PSTN office, uh, offer, Microsoft a little less so. But 
you know, what we see here is a Microsoft slide, and I think it, we don't have the exact same numbers yet for Zoom, but I think it makes the point, which is what we see is that only a small uh, subset of the cust potential customers of a, of a cloud connection use the, you know, the cloud, built-in cloud dial tone. And the reason for that is really straightforward, which is cost. Now, yes, um, if you use Zoom's dial tone or if you use Microsoft's dial tone, um, you know, you don't, you don't have to deal with the SBC in a separate contract with the carrier. <laughs> but the issue is you're paying a per month, per seat fee for dial tone. And, you know, I use Teams as an example. I mean, you, you're talking about something there, uh, you know, talking about like $12 for per seat per month for domestic and another, I believe, 24 for international minutes. Well, you know, you 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 start doing the math on that and you realize, hey, if I got a hundred users just on domestic calling, that is a that is a big chunk of money every month for dial tone. There's no way, you know, the typical hundred user offer is, is gonna, you know, 10 lines, 11 lines. I mean, what's the most that's gonna cost you? Three, four hundred dollars plus a little usage? You might be, you might be at $450 right uh you know kind of worst case um compare that to you know you're talking about the same 100 users 1200 dollars for microsoft dial tone that's domestic with no international so you pretty quickly see that if you're a, a decent sized business over 10 12 users there's a good chance that you if you want to use one of these next gen cloud services like teams or zoom you want to bring your own dial tone or use direct routing, whatever you want to call it, zip trunks as the solution. And so when you do that, you're going to need, as Brian mentioned, you're going to need this session border controller. And when you think of a session border controller, you really want to kind of think of three things that it does. The first thing is, you know, we refer to it sometimes internally as the Swiss Army knife, because all of you have been in the telecom industry. And uh, if you've been here long enough, You've seen the variety of standards. SIP has clearly become the most mature of those. But anyone knows that even though uh, I can write the SIP standard and you can write the SIP standard, that doesn't inherently mean that they're interoperable. And the SPC gets in the middle. That's one of the reasons why Microsoft requires it uh, as part of their um, team's deployment. Gets in the middle and has a series of knobs that you can fine tune to adjust so that you can let any carrier talk to teams. Right? So that's a, a big part of what it does. The second piece is it handles a lot of the uh, you know, high volume transactions that are part of any trunking environment. What I mean by that is, you know, you can have situations where you have, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, you can hit, uh, ha have, uh, you know, traffic uh, hits along the way. I can't get the words out here or, uh, you can have something like a denial of service attack. Now, many of us are familiar with the idea of a denial of service attack for data traffic, but the same thing can happen on the voice side where somebody can sit there and try and pound your numbers and try and prevent other people from getting in. One of the things that an SBC can do is it can actually throttle back those attempts at a telephony denial of service attack and ensure that your you know, desired calls continue to go through. And that whole ability to monitor and, expect and inspect voice traffic is true across the whole set of uh, service fe feature services. Um, so the whole idea of the SBC here is that it, it provides a real-time monitoring and management of voice traffic. And then the other thing that the SBC does is it really provides a way to glue together legacy and the latest cloud services. So uh, one of the things that the SBC does is provides multiple ways to manage legacy attributes, particularly uh, if you use something like a hardware-based SBC where we have analog station ports, we have uh, you know, analog or digital trunks, uh, we can actually provide connectivity between a new cloud service like Teams or Zoom and a legacy PBX like an Avaya or Mitel or something like that. So there's lots of different tools inside the SPC. We, we handle things like SIP forking. We do, you know, uh, uh, we can handle redundant SIP trunks. So if you have multiple different connections to the service provider, well, we can manage if there's any kind of a failover, it's seamless. And all, those, all of those 
types of tools are built into the SPC. So it's not just a security asset, it's also a whole migration asset. Uh, asset. And, and the reason why we bring this up is because we recognize that um, as you go out and talk to customers, you're gonna find that everybody's got a little bit different story, right? You're gonna have small customers who say, hey, I, I just want to get to the cloud, get rid of all this stuff in my office, make it go away, make me completely cloud native. You're going to have large customers that are going to be in a situation where they're going to say, hey, time out. I've got thousands, I don't know, millions of dollars tied up in existing PVX equipment. Yes, I'd like to get to Teams, but that's going to take me months or years. How do I get myself in a position where I can do a little at a time? And then there's there's the customers, and I, I would suspect many of you have these, where you know you have one site, maybe they're moving, they're doing something different from one location to another, and they say, look, now is the perfect time. I want to get rid of that. I've got an old Merlin legend or a Partner Plus system in there. I want to get rid of it and replace that with the cloud, but that doesn't mean I want to touch everything. The thing that you want to really understand is you can leverage a session border controller uh, to do any of those scenarios. And it's perfectly normal that customers won't necessarily want to be able to jump entirely to the cloud in, in one day. Um, and as a result of that, we at Ribbon have a number of different ways that customers can get there. So um, what, what we see in the left is really kind of the traditional model for how most SIP trunks are installed or, or legacy analog or TDM trunk trunks as well. So what you see is you got a service provider up in the upper left, and then the dial tone goes down into the customer premises somewhere, and typically it's been then terminated onto a you know, PBX, a contact center, uh, out to all the phones, et cetera. Now, today, if that customer says, hey, I want to leave that in, or I want a migration strategy for that, the simplest thing to do is leverage the SBC, can actually continue to terminate the dial tone in the customer premises. It can fork the calls, it can push them over to the contact center of the legacy PBX, but it can also take calls and push them northbound back up into say the Teams or the Zoom cloud and, and handle all of that traffic. And so it's up to you and your customer as to how you migrate things. You might, you might leave certain things in place, you might quickly move 99% of the traffic, but but maybe leave the PBX to do things like manage, uh, you know, door phones and elevator phones, right? Whatever the scenario is there, you can handle it. And of course, the other thing I should just mention, we'll touch on it a little later, is uh, in these kind of hardware models, Microsoft just, just in the last day or so has announced something called the Survivable Branch Appliance or SBA capability for Teams, which actually allows you to run a little local session of Teams so that for some reason you lose contact with the cloud, um, the local session can keep uh, local calls uh, going even if the, the cloud's missing. Um, now, more recently, and, and particularly in 2020, we're seeing a number of customers who say, hey, you know, I actually don't want any hardware anymore. Um, you know. The reason why I'm moving to the cloud for Teams or Zoom is because I, I want to get rid of all of this uh, legacy hardware that I've got all over the place in all my sites. I want that up in the cloud. So why in the world do I have to continue to have this uh, your, your security appliance down on my premises? And the answer is you don't. Um, we have something we call it the, our SBC SWE Lite or Software Edition Lite. Um, and you can actually run that in the public cloud, in AWS or Azure. You can also run it as a virtual machine in your data center, if you so choose. But the whole idea here is you can actually, uh, since dial tone's coming from the cloud, and it's going to either the, um, the Zoom or Teams cloud, why not put the security element, the session border controller, in the cloud as well? And of course, as you do that, it's really convenient from a scalability perspective, because just like any other cloud service, you know, you don't have any hardware to buy, you don't have to manage anything. If you need it to be bigger, you just go up on AWS or Azure and say, hey, I need a, a different size processing element and uh, throw a couple licenses on there and you're ready to go. Uh, so it, that's a, a, a compelling solution. And then last, uh, but certainly not least, is this whole idea of an as a service model. So for 
you know, the last decade, Ribbon has been building SBCs. It started out as all hardware, and then uh, we moved to these software models. But most recently, just, uh, just this fall, we've introduced the idea of an as a service model. We call it Ribbon Connect for Microsoft Teams Direct Routing. Now today, uh, we don't have that for Zoom. That, that may be an offer in the future, but right now we're focused on the Teams model. And the idea behind this instantiation of the SPC is, hey, what about customers? What about uh, partners like yourselves who say, look, I don't want anything to do with any hardware. I don't want any, I don't want to buy any appliance or any software. All I want to do, come up with a way on a per month, per seat basis to give me security for my team's deployment. That's exactly what Ribbon Connect is. So, you know, uh, there's no hardware, no software, nothing. All you do literally is go up to a web page, um, you integrate with Active Directory so you can pull all the users for the individual team's environment uh, into the solution. You, you pull down a few menus, you select the user names, you select some of the feature functionality, you, you have to you know, configure who the SIP trunking provider is in a pull down menu. You do those few things and Ribbon Connect handles the rest of it. Uh, we send you a bill. That's about the, the, the biggest part of the equation. Um, you, you go off and send that bill to the customer and get paid for it. Um, it it's really that straightforward. Not only that, but we actually even provision Teams itself. So we, we actually uh, have APIs into the, the Microsoft 365 Cloud and actually go in and configure the Teams users. So not only you get the security part of it, but you also eliminate the having to learn you know, Microsoft PowerShell and all the details of Microsoft Teams. So at the end of the day, what we want to get across to you all is that regardless of how your customer wants to get to the cloud, we have an option for that. And that could, the option could be in terms of, you know, whether it's a hardware platform, software, some sort of a public cloud instance or as a service, as well as scalability options, depending on the sophistication. We recognize that how a, you know, a five person accounting office buys and how a 5,000 person, uh, you know, large, uh, uh, enterprise buys will be different. We have products that fit that you know meet those needs in terms of scalability, in terms of high availability, um, in terms of feature functionality and how they integrate across multiple sites. So whatever the scenario is, there's a way to leverage our portfolio to get you there. And you know at the end of the day, our goal really is to be able to mitigate the things that prevent your customers from making a move. So whether it's something like an existing investment and they're worried, hey, how do I, how do I keep that and migrate to the cloud? Whether it's an existing service provider contract, we know that we have ways to make that work. Um, you know, they might have an existing hardware investment other than a PBX, like a contact center. And they might have legacy devices that comes up all the time. How do I handle things like overhead paging, door phones, those kinds of things. All of those are things that a ribbon solution can help you solve. So no matter what the customer environment is, we want you to feel comfortable that you can walk in and start positioning a Teams migration or a Zoom, Zoom migration and know you're gonna be able to get it connected and get it working. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Brian. He's gonna talk a little bit about some of the details of a couple of our uh, solutions, including our Edgemark portfolio, because we know that uh, you know, 888 has been a longtime partner in this environment for, the, for, for us. And uh, there are a number of folks out there who might be interested in the latest view of that. So Brian, should turn it over to you. Thanks, Greg. So yeah, this is just kind of a flyover of uh, the, the kind of the core elements of the Edgemark portfolio as it relates to, you know, SIP trunking, uh, unified communications, teams, what have you. I'd call attention to a couple of different products. The 29, on the left hand side, the 2900E and the 2900A, that's probably where most of uh, customers migrate, you know, you head towards. It's a very 
full featured. Uh, it was a recently redesigned. Uh, it's, it's a very um, attractive platform from a cost of performance perspective. Uh, the only difference between the E and the A is that the E, the A actually has some analog interfaces. So if you want to do a, you know, you want to connect in, like Greg was saying, a, a pager or a paging system or a door phone or whatever, that all can be done within the 2900A. You also have the ability to do some outbound ports, some FXO ports. So if you want to do survivability, you know, we have a survivability capability that you might want to route uh 911 calls out of or other uh, other numbers uh, as you so want to configure uh, that can be routed out of the fxo ports using survivability and then on the right hand side we have what we call the multi-service gateways we've had the 4806 and 4808 appliances for a while these really um their strength is sort of the t1 pri emulation uh, so you're bringing a sip trunk into the box and then out is uh, is a PRI to the PBX. So um, you know if you're connecting legacy systems, this is really where uh, that's an attractive option. The 6000 has uh, just been released within the last say 12 months. That has uh, the probably the biggest advantage there is um, is the integrated LTE radio. So if you wanted to do survivability and use 4G LTE, that's that's in the box ready to go. Um, this is also a platform that we're going to use for, it's kind of our go forward platform for a lot of different things. Um, it's going to have some uh, capabilities for uh, putting additional VNFs on. So there's an additional processor capability on there. So you, um, in the not too distant future, you'll have the ability to add additional services um, that have been sort of rolled out against that 6,000 platform, say like a uh, application specific firewall or potentially SD-WAN or something like that. So that's kind of a flyover of the Edgemark portfolio, Greg. Do you want to maybe go through the? Yeah. You know? hey, Brian, let me ask you to bring up two things because I know that um, uh, it comes up. You want to just talk about what the difference is because, like, if you go up on the 888 site, you'll see, oh, here's a 2900E, and there's two versions of it: regular and cloud to edge. You want to just spend a second and, and talk about what the difference is. Yeah, so what we've done with the with the cloud to edge, um, so if we think about how these two products, any of these products you see here can be purchased, uh, one would, I, would be sort of the traditional way, which is it's a perpetually licensed software. You kind of make a guess at the number of sessions. So, you know, you think it's a small office that needs 10 sessions, you buy that particular license and uh, you know, you pay that sort of perpetually licensed software price based on the, the amount of capacity you think you need. You might guess wrong and, uh, and 10 may not be enough. You may have to come back and add more later, you know, what have you. So that that um, is a, you know, it, it's kind of a, the way it's always been done, but maybe not the way you might want to think about it going forward. And that's why we created the Cloud to Edge offer. So what we did there is we brought the price of the hardware down substantially and we, in essence, created a monthly recurring uh, fee, which is includes full capacity of, of the hardware. So if you want to run that thing up to 300 concurrent calls with, um, you know, which which could support, you know, even the, you know several thousand users, you could certainly do that. Um, so it's really designed to um, kind of mirror how you're selling your services today, right? You are. Um, you're selling, in general, generally speaking, a monthly recurring offer. This is a month recurring service. It also allows you to start thinking about how you might want to monetize some of those features, like I was talking about survivability. Uh, we also have kind of an SD-WAN, enhanced WAN capability that would enable you to offer some disaster recovery functionalities with that with that LTE modem. So now it kind of eases how you would go to market with some other products and services like a survivability or or a um, or disaster recovery kind of offer make sense it does to me <laughs> well, i've heard it before so uh, yeah hopefully i would know certainly talk to uh your 888 rep they can walk you through the differences there I, you know i personally think uh the cloud edge offer is is a more attractive long-term solution for yeah, I would agree, uh, particularly, you know, for, for 
a lot of customers are, are concerned about, particularly in 2020, and I would suspect it's going to be the same for 2021, they're worried about cash outlay. So they, they, they feel a lot more comfortable about a model that, that uh, you know, protects their, their cash situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I, uh, I, I'm just going to spend, uh, we want to get a couple more slides here, actually. So I'm just going to spend uh, a minute or two talking about uh, a few other piece parts of the portfolio. I'm not going to get into the details of these. I just want to make sure people know they're there. And one of the things we did is we linked, so if you get the slides later uh, as a PDF, we linked um, where you can go on the ribbon website and find out more. But one of the things we want to make sure that uh, folks understand is that in addition to the small enterprise SBCs that we make, ribbon makes really sophisticated, large scale session border controllers for large enterprise environments. So if you get in a situation where you have a bid and somebody's coming at you and saying, hey, I, I need something, you know, with thousands of sessions of scale. Uh, you know, big bank, something of that nature, headquarters kind of environment. Just recognize these are out there. You know, we can absolutely help you with this. We can work with 888 and get you a bid or quote um, and, and uh, you know, go in and actually even help you sell one of these solutions. Um, you know, we have these in, in these deployed here literally in some of the biggest uh, financial institutions, universities. Uh, healthcare environments, uh, you know, these are rock solid, high availability solutions. So if you run into an opportunity uh, and you don't necessarily have to be familiar and, and train yourself up on these, but just recognize that they're out there and we'd be happy to help you with that. And then the other thing is uh, we do have a significant position uh, in the traditional what I call ESBC business. Um, this is tied to our SBC 1000, our SBC 2000, our SBC SWE Lite, Software Edition Lite. Uh, these are all, as with the Edgemark uh, elements, all Zoom and team certified. The hardware includes options for FXO and FXS ports. And I talked a little earlier about the cloud options that we have available uh, on the public, both virtualized and on the public cloud, uh, AWS and Azure with the SWE Lite. So, you know, again, breadth of portfolio, just trying to give you a little bit of a view, not going to get into all the details of each. And then I, I mentioned this earlier as well. Um, just, just yesterday, um, Microsoft announced something called the Team Survival Branch Appliance. Uh, this is something actually that, that actually we've been working with Microsoft on for probably, a, I don't know, maybe almost a decade. It started out with uh, something for Skype for Business and now it's morphed into something for teams. And basically the idea here is that um, uh, we've created a, a, a little platform inside of our SBCs that runs a chunk of software that Microsoft creates, which basically runs a super lightweight, simple version of Teams locally. So for some reason, you lose access to the cloud. If the, if the 365 cloud goes down or more likely, let's say you had some sort of a WAN connection loss uh, for, for whatever, you know, the backhoe down the street, whatever it is, if that were to happen, um, you can be assured that you can still make and receive calls to the PSTN. And this is a big issue for customers who are thinking about moving to the cloud, even though the reality is their existing PBX is probably only three or four nines availability. There's that whole comfort level with, well, I can see it and touch it. I know what the lights are on on it. When I move to the cloud, what happens if something breaks? Now, the reality is uh, Microsoft probably spends a fair, and so does Zoom for that matter, spends a whole lot more time worrying about resiliency and reliability than your customer who lucky if they didn't plug the PBX into something with a light switch. Um, so the, the thing to appreciate, though, is these kind of options are out there. It's very cost effective. Um, and it's a way, again, to give customers peace of mind as they move to the cloud. And then the, the other thing we want to get across here uh, as, as used partners start looking at this cloud stack, we recognize that it can be a challenge, right? You're, you're used to selling uh, physical elements, which have a relatively high purchase and sale price. And you know you understand what, hey, that, what that's going to bring in from a cash perspective when you go to sell. And suddenly you move to this cloud model and you, you, um, 
and you see yourself in a situation where, hey, I don't have uh, you know, the same kind of revenue coming in, what do I do? Well, one of the things you wanna recognize is that you can leverage your relationship with 888 and sell an entire stack. If you go into a customer and you start selling all the pieces, not just the pieces you're comfortable with today, but the headsets, RSVCs, SIP trunks from a third party provider, right? A cloud contact center or physical contact centers, your own professional services, potentially the Office 365 or Zoom licenses. When you roll that together, you end up with a, you know, a significant value equation. And unlike that one-time sale and that maintenance contract where you have to go back and try and resell that every year, once you get into this cloud model, you're in a situation where, hey, every time there's an add-on, you get a call because they need another license. They're gonna add another headset. You have that relationship that over the lifetime of this experience is actually gonna deliver more revenue to you. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Brian who's just gonna wrap it up. And while, while he's wrapping it up, I'm gonna look at some of the questions that came in. All right, put me on the spot. Um, yeah, let's talk about uh... Why ribbon? So I, you know, I think as as I as I boil down kind of like why why you'd want to partner with ribbon as you go to market against Teams and and now Zoom is sort of an emerging technology. Um, you know, our our relationship with Microsoft is very long and very uh, deep, just in terms of us working in tandem with them at, at a very detailed technological level to make sure that um, when their systems wanted to want to uh, you know send and receive phone calls that it, it works as it should and it's secure and it's um, a very you know a technically very stringent solution so we, we've had we have those long long relationships particularly with Microsoft sort of proving out this proving out this SBC product and making it really, uh, the class in the marketplace. Um, we have lots of different options for you, particularly, you know, I think, you know, we certainly, you know, hardware is traditionally, you know, cloud, the Azure AWS is, is a very nice, we see, we're seeing a lot of adoption there. But now these as a service offers um, are really interesting just in terms of you as a service provider, you as a, you know, either a managed service provider or a reseller or what have you. Um, it just makes it easy for you to get into market and and you know we you can something that you can easily resell you don't need to have a lot of um uh, engineering or technology experience within your organization to start selling an offer today uh so we make it really really easy for you to to get into market and then lastly i think just in terms of the market itself there's just a ton of it out there we're seeing we see a huge you know a huge number of People interested there, I mean, I think this, uh, you know, if there is a silver lining of this pandemic. It's really created uh, a tremendous amount of demand and, and desire for modernization of phone and unified communications. So, I mean, you could be the beneficiary of that, and we can certainly help in that journey. Greg, anything you want to add to that? Well, I, I you know, I think just uh, maybe, you know, I, I always joke uh, where there's mystery, there's margin. And uh, I think this marketplace right now a lot of customers are uh, uh, they're not used to this tra this cloud transition they're looking for partners who can help them and their first concern is not to find the cheapest solution uh, so i think there's a lot of opportunity here for partners if if, if you raise your game i think what you're going to find is it's a good time to to be in this business absolutely, absolutely. hey now brian now uh, uh, we did have a couple questions come in. Uh, this yeah. first one's right up your alley. Um, <laughs> somebody said, uh, obviously someone here who's familiar with the uh, Edgemark portfolio. I didn't see the Edgemark 300 on your chart. Ah. Can you can you speak to that for a second? Absolutely. So the Edgemark 300 is a analog terminal adapter, an ATA that, um, which you know is is somewhat of a commoditized product. But you know what where we what we what we decided to do with that product is make it a little more full featured, make it integrate with our EdgeView platform. So you have analytics and um, remote troubleshooting and, and all those capabilities that you're used to having with EdgeView. So it's um, it's a much more enhanced 
um, ATA plant platform. So again, an ATA, it's a, you know, it enables you to connect analog devices on one side and have that uh, tr traverse in, and SIP in the other side. Um, it's uh, you know it, it's just it's a it's a much more higher end product that uh, I think has a, a lot of, might have some potential for uh, for what you're doing. Um, I certainly see it as a, having potential for if you have a cloud based um, SBC. Let's say you have your your SBC in Azure, you know having an ATA on site and just having those two work in tandem. If you do have a couple of analog lines you need to to take care of, that's an easy way of doing it. Uh, and then uh, I'm just going to wrap it up. Two other quick questions here on interoperability. Uh, one was, uh, you know, can uh, what about migrating from a 3CX platform to Teams or Zoom? Uh, well, uh, I would say generally speaking, that's probably one of the most ideal platforms to move over uh, because 3CX is is SIP based. I would say the same for anyone who has Asterix. Uh, they they um, uh, there, there are a lot of options there in terms of the way they handle SIP trunks today. It's relatively, relatively straightforward uh, to, to move those. Also, if you had something like our Ribbon Connect uh, service, uh, we can tightly integrate with those and actually give you a, a, a very smooth a migration path from that perspective. Um, and then the other question here was, well, what about Yaling phones? Uh, and uh, the person kind of gave a very general question, but a uh, couple things to think about. And I know 888 is a, 888 is a long time uh, you know, provider of Yaling solutions. Is Yaling does have dedicated Teams phones? They have a lot of them, uh, and uh, those are very well um, respected inside the Teams community. Um, so certainly those are a good option. Uh, you know. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that uh, Microsoft has announced, but they, they haven't gotten into any great detail, that sometime in 2021, they are going to have some sort of a solution that allows you to reuse legacy SIP phones. So if you have something like a 3CX deployment or a, a Asterix deployment or a, a, any product that, that leverages an industry standard SIP phone, um, there's a good chance that there'll be a way in 2021 to be able to leverage those uh, to a greater extent. Um, and of course, um, Yealink also has a, a number of certified solutions for Zoom. So uh, there, there are a number of good choices out there and there are ways to leverage what you already have in place. And so I think that's about it. Uh, Brian, any last words before we wrap up? No, I appreciate everybody's time today and listening in and uh, have a happy holidays. All right. Uh, same here. So thank you very much again for your time. If you have any questions at all, reach out to your 888 representative and they'd be happy to put us in, in contact to help you out. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Brian and Greg, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day.